Hello and welcome to the Black Mind Podcast, episode 121. My name's Jeff. I went to grab pizza and Alan's mad at me. Hi, Alan. Of course I'm mad. Of course I'm mad at you. Yeah. you no, no. I try. I, just so the audience know, I try. I work every Saturday and Friday. I try to be on time for either 8 or 7 o'clock. Tonight I got, to, I got off at 5.30. I was home. I had supper. I was online five minutes early and recording five minutes early. Jeff disappears to go get food. Now, I'm Jeff. mad. <laughs> um... <sighs> also yeah. joining me in a, is a man who's disappointed in me is Josh. Hi, Josh. I, you know, out of all the people who's late, I mean, like, I thought I would be late because I was doing shit. But I was like, no, I, I was here. I was totally here. In fact, uh, I was like, oh, fuck, I got to be doing something right now. So I actually clicked on and I was like, yeah, let's do some shit. And Jeff's not here. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jeff, and I was passing the time with putting fucking emojis in the stupid Discord chat. A lot, a lot of emojis. One too many emojis. I was trying <laughs> to find all the anger emojis. And I think I found most of them. Maybe I could find a fruit and throw in there that also symbolizes anger. But that's that's about it. I like how the first topic on our topic list is, my god, Jeff, you are useless. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. I, I, how I, am I I'm useless? Because you fucked off right before recording. You could have been, hey, guys, we got to record a little bit later. Let's meet for eight. I could have gone to the live stream for a couple minutes and just had a fun time there for a couple minutes and then came back. I would have been okay with that. I would have been happy with that because then I would have known that, hey, I had a good food. I, Whenever I'm late, I actually acknowledge the fact that I'm, hey, yo, I'm still coming down. Like, I'm still going to be online. It's just taking me a little bit longer than intended. I still at least acknowledge the fact that I have a phone that has Wi-Fi. Jeff, on the other hand, adamantly said, um, and I can look at the timestamp, at 3.30 p.m., um, 7 Be there for 7 uh, o'clock. Uh, yes, I know what I said. Time. And then and then me and jo- – uh, I was in the in the general chat at 6.55 uh, or 6.56 just after Josh posted OK in the chat. And then Josh posted uh, the, th- the topic list at 7.01. Uh, and then Jeff um, just and, is gone. And then, and then, literally, not even twenty, not even five minutes later, you time out. <laughs> I'm mad, if you can't tell. But we're gonna stop talking about that. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on to something that makes me happy. I'm gonna talk about Ruby season, uh, Ruby season five, and, Ru- and Rebel season five or four. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. It's fixed. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down there and I'm gonna beat you to death with a wrench. Especially the one that you use on your Mustang. Right, you know uh, what? Like, here's no, the thing: is can... like, like, here's the thing. It doesn't. Do you like Rebel Season Five? Okay, good, 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 good. That's all you need to say. It's like because we already know like what you're gonna say. You're gonna say you like it, and you're gonna say you enjoy it, and then Ruby's Actual, gonna be the same okay. thing. Well, okay. Here's the thing. Uh, for for rebels, I'm gonna actually really quickly point this out about rebels is um, there's some th- animation there's some animation choices I feel like they've that feel weird about how the motions feel in the show. But besides that, it, it feels good. It's episode three and four because they've been doing they did two two uh two one hour long episodes for the season opener, which is phenomenal. Um, in the second one in season three and four, they actually finally turn around and actually like like if we hear it in Ro- rebels Rogue One. Star Wars Rogue One and stuff like that. Saul of Guerrera is like a terrorist from the Empire's point of view. And we're like, wow, surprise. The Empire rebel- labeled a rebel a terrorist. And then finally in this in this season, they've actually like turned around. It's like, no, no, Saul Guerrera actually targets civilians and actually like targets like people who surrender. He breaks like Geneva Convention things. And I'm like, yes. And then shit happens. It's actually pretty fun. They actually get close to discovering the Death Star by accident. But then they don't. <laughs> And uh, Ruby, Ruby's actually still good. I strongly suggest people to watch it. 
is it is it less like now like stabbing yourself in the crotch and watching the blood pool it's actually got a pretty good uh i it's it's a really really good like i like jeff i know how you feel about it i don't complain Uh, i understand what you how you feel here here's the thing i think ruby season four is a lot better than ruby season three and ruby season one and ruby season two i agree with you there because because and and like and like in my brief show watching experience i stopped watching ruby actually um after like the first three episodes and i was just like this is garbage but the animation got better the plot got better it was because season one uh they they noticed that uh in season one when they initially launched the series um they initially launched it as five minute long episodes because yeah. they're like, well, we're gonna stick with the Rooster Teeth, st- uh, the Red vs. Blue style of five minute long episodes, and then do like big important episodes as ten minutes, like how they did with Red vs. Blue at the time, and mm-hmm. how they'd done with like all their shows up until that point. But at towards the end of the season one, the fans were like, okay, we get it, but we want one whole episode. We don't want part one, part two. We want one whole episode. And they're like, okay, fine. We're gonna take a week's break. We're gonna compile everything together, make sure it flows nicely and neatly together, and then we'll go. And then we'll go from there. And that's how that's how they did. And they've gone from there, where they started. And then at season two, ten minute episode, ten minute episode. Everything was ten minute episodes at that point, which is great. I actually prefer it that way. Then season three rolled around, and season three actually the plot actually happened. Yeah, and it, it, like the animation, the animation was clean. It was tight. They actually did a very good uh, homage to Monty Ohm in the first five minutes of the, uh, the first minute of the first episode, because the like, uh, Monty Ohm had passed away while in production of season three. Like it, it hit them a lot harder than like a lot of people realized because like they shut down everything at Rooster Teeth for a whole week. It like, wasn't. It wasn't just that. I think that the thing that really kind of helped season four and stuff like that was Monty when Monty passed and stuff like that like I'm comparing this to Giant Bomb when Ryan Davis passed away and when Monty Ohm passed away it was big news news when Ryan Davis passed away it was big news so yeah. it it wasn't like it wasn't like this was a unique thing but I think that the thing that really kind of stuck out to me was like okay Rooster Teeth is really, really hit hard by this thing. I wish that they would would still, like, acknowledge that this happened and stuff like that. Like, the thing that gets me going is stuff like that. It's like, Giant Bomb took a week off of the, taking the podcast. Yeah. To grieve. They weren't public about how they were grieving and stuff like that. And I think that that was the thing that really got me going. going then, was like, okay, guys, like, I get that you're grieving. Don't go on the internet for a bit and say, "Oh, I'm grieving." Yeah, and and like I would have appreciated it if like they didn't have somebody who broke down in the middle of a show. They didn't though. They did in the no. I watched they it. I, um, yeah, they did oh, on yeah, the no, yeah. and then it was just like, okay, guys, like I don't want to see this because. Yeah, I know I, this I, is a big yeah, deal, no, no, but yeah, like, that, that, you, don't... Got, you got to remember, I, I don't watch the no, I, I don't watch yeah. the no. I, it's, I never, I've never found it all that entertaining. But like the podcast where they're like the the like the, the podcast, the one week they skip, they had a full like a full week of just downtime where like that stuff. And you know what? It's gonna happen. It's it's unfortunately that it happens, but at the same time, it's well, you need ha- that you need that time to heal. And yeah, like, and the thing that's is, the thing is like is like I'm not saying they're saying what is wrong. I I said I would have appreciated more if they had not published that episode of the no, because at the end of the day, that made me feel very upset. Yeah, and, at the end of the day, the it is... kind of, it kind of like, it was like a giant scratch against my heart and kind of opened up oh, an yeah. old wound. No, 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 and, the, and it the was thing just like that, that's the reason why I'm also going to put this out is they had the the podcast after the week Marty died. They had Bernie, um, I think Miles, and the owner of Rooster Teeth, like the big company owner, the president of the company, came down. They sat on the podcast and they said. Okay, we were. This is going to be a very somber episode because we're paying homage to uh, Monty Ohm. and they went through the podcast very quietly, and they talked about Monty Ohm. like the like the, the way they like went through it is just like they talked about him like the, like he was like they understood like he's gone. We're gonna and then they made this statement at the end of the podcast is we're gonna live by Monty Ohm's mo- uh, motive of uh, 
uh, move forward. You've got to keep going on. So we have to. He wouldn't have accepted us if we had missed another week. And that's the reason why, like the no, which is I think ha- I think the breakdown happened the week after. Is did it not? Uh, I think it happened the same day, the same about the same, day the, he, the same uh, week. About it yeah. was about a week, and it was like okay, guys, like no, no, uh, and that was the thing is like they they've 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 and that's the big thing for me is like the homage they paid in Ruby to Monty Ohm is you see Monty Ohm's signature in the sun by him, like them signing, like making it look like uh, it's the two, two birds flying in front of the sun and the sun's a hard circular outline and the two birds are hard black lines. And it looks like MM are on either side of it thing. So it looks like it's Monty Ohm, yeah. M Ohm. And that's, I'm like, that's a great way to pay homage. And the, and the entire scene is like, is Ruby paying, like going to see her mother's grave and says, Hey mom, this is what's happening at school. This is how I like, how life is. It kind of sucks that you're not around, da, 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 but but I hope I can make you proud. And they goes into the season, and it just they they hold no stops. Like they had season three planned, and they were in production when Monty Ohm passed away. So they just like we're gonna keep going at this point. We're not changing anything. We're gonna keep his dream alive, and that's the reason why I like this is in the season five. Like they're going hard. They're like, no, this you can the polish. And the work and effort they've put into the se- this season in season four shows because everything's rich, everything's vibrant, everything's. They took like, some lessons. Passion. Yeah, it's... They, 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 it's not even that they took some lessons. They sat down and said, "We need to be better. We need to be at Monty Ohm's level." And they and they are doing it again. And they're like, "It's sure it doesn't have the same combat style as Monty Ohm, where Monty Ohm prefers big swirling fights with one verse like 60 guys. That was yeah. Monty Ohm's thing. And they're more like we prefer one-on-one fights because it looks more hey, – you can get better flow through it. Monty Ohm's style was, of course, the big fights. And none of us can compete with that, so we're not going to try. We're going to do it in very – simple ways so like quick one one two jabs through like big fights and then a big fight at the end which is the way he uh, is this best we way we can copy his style i love ruby i i know josh doesn't li- uh jeff doesn't like it josh I, is just sitting in the background and just listening josh, to just, josh just doesn't yeah. care yeah josh dicks i i i enjoy well i enjoy the series uh like when it first started coming out and i was like oh this is okay this is neat but I don't know, like every other like TV, like I just stopped slowly watching TV and just start watching more video game shit to the point of like, I just don't watch anything that's remotely television in the first, in the, in yeah. the first place now. It's just, I just don't have time. And it's like, I want video games. So it's no, no, I, like, I, oh, I'm watching this TV thing. And I'm like, I don't like, I don't care at all. No, no, I, so, I, I get that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. But, so uh, it's like, yeah, I'm happy it's still going on. But at the same time, it's like, I, I just don't have the time. No, no, that's that's me with uh, with um, what's the anime called? Um, Re Zero and Gundam Thunderbolt and Gundam yeah. Iron Orphans. And I, I have, I Jeff, I promise you, I'm going to be sitting down at the when I finish work. Which, by the way, I have now have a definitive date. I have a definitive date when I'm laid oh, off. <laughs> it's, you, you wanna, You're you celebrating this. this. You're, You're actually, actually celebrating no, this. No, 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 no. I'm not celebrating because it fucks over my EI because it's, it's two days into the new pay period, so I have to wait two extra weeks to before I can apply for EI instead of it's just applying on Monday. Oh, um, shit. Damn it. I get laid off on the Tuesday next week. And I'm like, no. What's EI? I don't, uh, employment insurance. Employment insurance. Oh. You know, 900 bucks every two weeks. Oh, uh, okay. Surprise, uh, people, my, my friends who live down in the States. Uh, we have social welfare. We have social programs. This is the thing you want from socialism, but you don't want the rest of it. Yeah, this is the stuff, like, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, like, I again, season five is fan- fantastic. They're actually, like, the plot's moving along mo- fine. Other than, of, like, a few animation glitches, uh, other than, like, one or two animation glitches I've seen over the course of the episode of the series, so far, I've not noticed much. It's actually, like, really, really nice. Mm-hmm. Character's hair isn't just static formed shapes around a body. Now it's a, they actually move. It, it, oh, Jeff, you should watch the new the season four and season five. Yeah, maybe watch season three just to get fucking caught up in the plot because 
yeah. all the plot happens in season three, and then it goes on from there. I think I think what we should do is we should do an episode or a, a live stream of just Jeff Jeff just watching Ruby, like and me just sitting in the background going, <laughs> yeah, and then me I just mean, sitting there going like this is terrible, and, and then, then if people can, donate money, four. and if people donate money, I get to watch an episode of Gundam. Battle Build Fighters or Gundam Thunderbolt. Hey, yeah, no, I'm actually, I'm totally hyped to watch <laughs> that, that series. So I'm actually totally hyped to see those two series. I'm and I'm, I gotta still catch up on, you know, Iron Blood Orphans. Hey, Iron Blood Orphans is good. Like, let me be honest, okay? Um, Iron Blood Orphans is like the greatest. Gundam series of all time. Uh, no, 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 nay, nay, no, no. I refuse to accept that because Unicorn's a thing, and holy f- fuck. Unicorn has so deep. It, it can't. It, it, you it, can't it, beat it, Unicorn. You can't. Like, Iron Orphans is good for combat and, like, the, the, the aesthetic of the style. Unicorn is fantastic because it ties off the, the ending of Char, uh, Char's counterattack, the movie. It, it's just so fantastic. But we're getting off topic. Um, uh, since we basically drowned out Josh for the past, you know, yeah. um, ten minutes, I want to say, am, uh, Josh, just, well, let's talk about some horror movies. <laughs> sorry, porn movies. You horror. Said, you said horror. Por- oh, horror. Horror, horror, mo- Not okay, horror right. movies. Horror movies. Like, horror. How much uh, horror movies? Yeah. <laughs> how much? So, did you watch Jigsaw? Oh, uh, no. Actually, I was just wanted to talk about the f- first... <laughs> I was want to talk about Jason movies, basically. Because oh. uh, I was just on, on a tire, like, friggin' remembering the movies I was watching, uh, like, last Halloween. I was... Uh, once, once still actually had television. <laughs> and not just friggin' sports t- television, or sports television it is now. Uh, that Spike TV would have the um, Jason... Was it a the Friday the Thirteenth marathon? Like practically all day, uh, and it went. I think it went through almost all of them. But of course, they have to make some edits to skirt a couple of scenes of like no tits or no whatever. And I wanted to say that like I like the first three Jasons because it's sort of loosely based on reality. Where after the third one, it's just. Like, oh, he's just supernatural. It's like, what? No, it doesn't make any fucking sense at this point. Now you're just p- p- putting a stick in a dead man and p- making him dance again. It's like fucking crazy. Yeah, it's basically... Basically, Jason is one of those things where it's like, I don't... I have never seen a Friday the 13th movie. But they're all really it's, good. It's hilarious. They're good. They're good, dumb movies. Yeah. They're not horror movies. They're not modern day definition of horror movies. Oh no, they're no, just totally. Dumb, like they're, I was, they're dumb. <laughs> they're dumb gore fests. Is what they are. Yeah, you watch yeah, it. I was somebody... actively laughing at the first three. Yeah. Like it, it's not like Jigsaw where it just goes over the top. It's like it's like oh this girl's underneath the bed. Well, I hope that these people don't die. Oh God, they're terrible human beings. Jeez, I hope they do die. Not like yeah. Saw, oh, where it's no, like, have it's like, sex. It's not like Saw, where like somebody like goes in, like somebody who is innocuous, and then they get told like, "Oh, you did a bad thing." It's like, "Oh, okay, this person did a bad thing." Oh yeah, no, no, is no. this person you, you having mean, sex you, in the you, movie? They're you, dead. You mean, like, yeah? And that's the thing is, like, the original Saw was a psychological horror. That's the reason I liked it. And I, I when I first watched, it, I was like, "Wow, this is actually really good." I freely admit that it was actually a really good movie because it was a psychological horror. Is they, but they lost that after I think Saw two. Saw three and onwards. I think it was just Gorefest for the sake of being Gorefest. I never liked Saw. The original yep. Saw, actually, the original Saw, like, it doesn't have that much in fucking, like, brutal death scenes. Like, it's not just like, oh, surprise, you're dead. Like, how this person just gets eviscerated by this stupid choice they made. <laughs> I'm so evil. I have that maniacal laugh. I will now monologue. And I'm just like. <sighs> the key you need is in this pile of syringes. Good luck. 
oh, yes, that, by the way, that thing you saw at the start of the movie, that thing going down the drain, was the key to the handcuffs. If you had been fat... Spoilers. If, yeah. Spoilers. No, no. Okay, no. <laughs> this movie has been out for how long? There's no reason for that to be not a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. I, yeah. To, yeah. It's, it's actually... Like, I noticed that like the first time, like uh, the first time I watched it, I was like, "Is that I, like because I was watching it with my at the time girlfriend?" And I was just like, "Is that a key?" And she like looked at me, he's like, "You caught that?" I'm like, "Is that is that a spoiler?" <laughs> and she was like, "Yeah, I was gonna tell you about that at the end." I'm like, "What, what do you mean?" And then I saw the handcuffs. I'm like, "Is that the key to the handcuffs?" And she's like, "Yeah, what the fuck?" And I'm like. And then I like I like looked at her. I was like, "Yeah, you gotta remember, I I'm, I study animation. What do you expect?" Slight I see the... details, motherfucker. Yeah. Not only do I not only do I see details, like things that normally the things that actually like respectably bother me don't bother other people. It's actually really funny because I watched the oh I watched the My Little Pony movie just this past Sunday and I experienced my first game of Warhammer. But I'll, I will talk about that after. Um, My Little Pony movie is. Like I was watching it with the, my buddy, and I just like I cr- he saw me he saw me cringe, and he like looked at the screen. He's like, "What what are you cringing at?" And I'm just like, "Oh, there's an animation bug in the background, and it pisses me off." Alan. He didn't even see it until I po- po- commented at it. But yeah, no, uh, Saw is actually the only horror movie I've ever watched, and I love it. See, sorry, I got a little off topic. Yeah. You just don't like cringy uh, animations and shit, which is, yeah. But I mean, for, again, for the horror movies and stuff, like, yeah, like the first um, Saw, did I ever see the first Saw? I don't think I, no, I, I'm not very good with horror movies in general. So I just always go by, like, people's opinions or just see, like, snippets on internet or whatever. And I'm like, eh. I can see like the, the, like I can see like how it's like the psychological thing, and then afterwards, like people are like, "Oh, it's just just murder porn at this point," and I'm and I've, I've of course I just my mind kind of went with like uh, with that definition of like man, that, there's no murder porn doesn't make any sense. Oh, you mean just a lot of just gore? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, that, that, yeah, that's that's been about my problem with a lot of more recent horror movies. Like, OK, I will defend Cameron in the Woods to the death because it's just SCP, the fucking movie. Yeah, and I love it. Oh, I yeah. love it for that. But like a lot of people are like, it's a bad horror movie. I'm like, that's not the point of the movie. It's... The point is to point out like the point at the tropes that you see in every modern horror movie and laugh at them because of how absurd they are. Yeah, and like when they yeah. when they suddenly real like like the entire fact of like them finding the SCP commu- the facility and then just running havoc through it, I love it. It's just I, I I fucking like it's such a good movie. It's not it's not even like a really big horror movie because you see the shots coming and like it got like it was one of the best the best fucking hype ups for a fucking horror movie that just pulled the rug out from its audiences. They're like, you think this is a horror movie? You think this is a joke? Rip! Not anymore, motherfucker. And they just walked away. Mm-hmm. Oh. It's it's one of those things where I'm really kind of excited. It, it's one of those things where I'm really excited that uh, this exists and this movie exists and everything exists. In other news, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And our sorry, I was gonna say there's another there's another horror movie. Actually, I don't even think it's a horror because I saw a review of it online. It was the Happy Death Day. Oh, okay, that one is actually <laughs> one I'm kind of excited to see. Yeah, because people saying like, happy, "Oh, the trailers make it look." Happy Death Day. So it's the you know Groundhog Day, but instead of um you know the Groundhog Day, he, he, like in Groundhog Day, character oh, you know actively kills okay. himself, but he re- so, still relives uh, the same day I'm over just, and over. I'm but the girl quickly point this out. Uh, IBDM, Rotten Tomatoes, and Common Sense Media all have this at like a sixty percent, and then Google users all have this at like an eighty-five percent, and I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, but the thing is, though, is uh, I've heard on a bunch of uh, reviews for the uh, Happy Death Day movie was it, the trailers make it look like a horror film that has a little bit of a a murder or like a murder mystery feel to it that it's like, oh, this girl is dying every time she's meet the, meeting her murderer, but she's reliving the same day over and over. And uh, it's like the entire gimmick is like, can she solve this murder and murder the murderer before her day repeats again? And 
but the thing was like a, some one or two reviews I saw they said like this is not a horror movie at all if anything it's like a little bit of a comedy and I was like what really that's a big like you know yeah, no. rug that's underneath actually, you pulled, that's, like, that, that's actually what I just read on the, like all the things is it, it's a horror comedy with a romantic twist and I fucking love I fucking love the description and I'm like I kind of want to go see it now yeah. too bad I got D&D yeah. tomorrow unfortunately yeah. <laughs> to be to be fair, that movie kind of looks good. I'm more excited for Thor Ragnarok. Who isn't? Um, oh, it we're looks like the, the James Gunn of Thor movies. We're just getting totally off topic. I mean, <laughs> I mean, let's if you want to not get off topic, uh, we could talk about Destiny. Uh, Destiny Two, that is. It finally came out on PC. It is the How best. is it on PC? Okay, it's fine. It's great. It's it's amazing. I'm getting like 80 FPS. It should play some. I was gonna say it should play smoothly and actually be better in every it's, way. It's better than every way. I mean, the one thing I like, my complaint still stands of like, it's Destiny, ish, but it has more lore, <laughs> and they actually explain stuff, and they don't sit there and go like, well, like if you find read the, the group, data logs in your on online find, uh, at yeah. de- bungie dot com slash destiny slash data logs. Yeah, it, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm just like, that's a terrible way to do this, Bungie. You're, you you fucking suck. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 a good game. Um, the main thing I don't like about it is is that, like, for the amount of content that's in that game, it's it feels as if like it takes ten minutes to do a mission and it turns out to be half an hour. And the combat. That, is, in other words, and, in other words, what you mean is it's a good time sink because yeah. games that you feel like you only play for ten minutes and you end up like losing half an hour, an hour. You know, like I'm actually gonna tie this into the, into into one of my topics too. Is is just like with Emp- with Emp- uh, Total War and uh, Warhammer and stuff like that, where you you just sit down, you you play for ten minutes, you feel like you're playing just ten minutes, and then you just. Hey, you're, you've been playing for three hours, and you're like, this does not feel right. It's more of or less the fact that like the game doesn't ever hold your hand, and it it's weird because it's like there is missions in order to get your powers back. They take away your powers in the first five minutes of the game, and everyone who says that there is more storytelling in Destiny than or storytelling in Destiny 2's opening five missions is completely right, but they're also completely missing the problem with Destiny 1, which is Destiny 1's story was like basically like everything smoke and mirrors. It didn't explain everything, anything at all. Yet they we- left a lot. They left a lot on the table. To like, well, they left a lot on the table, and they didn't explain anything, which is not a way to do a movie like that. It's actually like really bad. I would or, say our video game. It it doesn't it doesn't like tell you what the fuck's going on. You you feel like really like, just you, going through you emotions. Actually, you actually feel like really cheated for the most part because you're like, oh look, <laughs> yeah. It yeah, it's actually just. I don't feel like it was a very fun way to do it. If anything, it's just lazy. Of like, you could have just thrown this in the game and been fine. Just. Throw in like books or some shit and like his own special page to describe shit, but they never did it. So it was like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's it's far more like if it's far more of like Destiny One didn't have a story until the Taken King, and that is an understatement. You could sit there and just say <laughs> Destiny One was sloppy missions I... tied together by some stupid thing and acted like a precursor to Destiny Two. And that would be completely fine. The one thing I don't like about Destiny 2 on PC, though, is I wish that they had por- done a job of porting over all of the original missions over. I agree there. Yeah. It would have been nice in order to, like, go through Destiny 1 and then go through Destiny 2 with different mi- with the same sort of, like, style. Like, that would have been nice. But instead, I don't get that, so I had to remake my character from the ground up. Yep. Yep. And it seems more like they're not going to bring Destiny Two over because they're they're Destiny they're One sore losers. Or yeah, Destiny Ones because they, they're a bunch of sore losers in my. I opinion. wouldn't say that because they 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 they've, well that's the thing is mm-hmm. like a lot of players haven't and didn't enjoy Destiny One as much as like people think they did. Like because if you actually like listen to like a lot of players who talk about Destiny One, they're like it really wasn't all that good. 
it was grind fest after grind fest after grind fest apparently with some with some characters or some group well, players is what they said well, it's basically just a first person shooter with just fucking mmo properties thrown I in mean, it's like i mean josh you, you know a... warframe it's yeah. like warframe but better it's more fun. That's debatable. Yeah. That's debatable. I'm sorry. You're you're a ninja spa uh, yeah. space alien ninja. I'm sorry, but how... there's more than like two enemy types for faction. Yeah, I guess. I, I guess. I guess. Uh, if the enemy types are actually more diverse, it makes for a more interesting combat style. But at the same time, oh, yeah. I don't know if it's better than Warframe. Warframe does different styles of work for the most part. That's what I. Yeah, that's I at least that's what I've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and um, I would say that the thing's different in Warframe is that they're trying to at least add like a Warframe PV adds a PVP and like Warframe though adds a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. Oh Warframe, like, yeah. And... Warframe's actually got like a huge expanse of fucking like support team behind it. It's actually fucking amazing to see. You're like, what the fuck, dude? And then they just keep going and just there's like apparently like I last time I talked to somebody who was playing through it, they were like, oh, yeah, by the way, we just released another patch. And they're like, hey, I'm just like, the fuck you had just another we had a new content literally a week ago. And they're like, yeah, we know. Exactly. I'm not even upset about that. That's like actually like a team that's entirely like up for like all that information because they actually like the team actually like fucking cares about making this game like at least have some good product and stuff like that yeah and anyways i would say that warframe and destiny are very comparable i really kind of want to get through warframe's expansions though but yeah warframe's expansions are long and thorough and difficult yeah you kind of need a decent i mean party of two or three at least to get through that I shit. Mean, it's not even that. It's just like there's so much. There's like eight it's... expansions. Yeah. It would be nice if I could just be want... like spend money, get there now. <laughs> well, I mean, spend money to I would argue if you could just at least spend money and get the what's it called? The modifications or whatever or at least get the higher ranking ones is like just those ones that be fine and you could just go in and go ham it's just <laughs> after a point in freaking warframe that you you will be tired of like this, the motions of going through the same like again if the enemy types were at least a little different you can you'd be like okay you know i could play this for a bit longer or maybe if it divvy up the uh combat with more puzzle elements or some shit but again like it doesn't really do that it's just mmo so it really uh, it really depends what you want to go in for Although, uh, what was it? I just want to add to Destiny 2 talk is the, was it Giant Bomb? Um, the, they did a uh, pl play of trying to go through one of the, the boss missions or some shit. Like, the, it was this king in this throne, golden, or yeah, one of the raids is like king in this golden throne room, and they're all trying to figure out how to freaking complete it. Mm -hmm. And it took them like six fucking hours. But uh, although the stuff you had to do was kind of interesting, like you had to, First kill all these demons in this room, then you have to go to this pedestals and you have to stay there. And then you had to run around a loop uh, in a track behind the, the stage. So it's like there's a stage in the middle and there's this loop around the, the outer edge of the stage and trying to figure out like, oh, you have to run into these hoops and this running track. And this, there's a thing behind you that's trying to kill you. But if you get into these hoops and get these um, orbs, and you get enough of them, you get a orb to slam dunk in the middle of the in the arena, and and you have to get ten of these fucking things, and there are only five of you, and there's so many enemies. It's like fuck. Yep. It's just it gets, it gets to a point of like, oh, we have to do this again. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fucking just. I think that's the one thing why I just I just don't want to pick up Destiny Two is because. I'm like, oh man, I want to get all this loot. And it's like, well, you have to play these raids. And I'm like, I have no friends. Mm -hmm. Just every time. Yep. It's like, can I just get really good bots? No, no, no bots. No, you can't. Doesn't no, exist. Josh, that's not allowed. Shh. Now, we have to move on to my rage and my anger after I caused Josh and Alan rage and anger earlier. You mean, you, you mean, you mean just me? Um, no, particularly you. 
Um, Josh, I have a good record player and amp recommendation to you, you motherfucker, for your fucking video game vinyl collection. Eee! How expensive Over is it? Over a thousand dollars. Not include. <laughs> Josh, 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 listen to me. Uh, listen to me. Okay. What? How the fuck do you have so much vinyl, yet not a record player? Because I was like, oh, I'll get this uh, you, v- vinyl because I like the video game. And I thought the niche idea of how owning a record is like, hey, that's kind of yeah, neat. But Josh, but and Josh, then... but Josh, 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 think, about, think yeah. about what you just said. I like the video game. game. I like the yeah. soundtrack of the video game. And I yeah. bought a medium <laughs> for the soundtrack that I could never listen to. That's the see. That's the gimmick jo- of Josh, like, oh man, Josh, Josh. <laughs> that's that's not okay. But, but the thing Josh, is, though, no. you're thinking like you're thinking like I don't have this on my computer in the first place. Like I totally do. Just at this point, I'm like I just want more of the same thing. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it, whatever. I give them I like to give this company my money. Okay, I think they're really good at what they do. Yes, sir. So I'm like, here's my money. Give me the cool you, shit. You sir have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you sir have a Probably. very bad problem. Probably. Like you're probably not I even mean, storing it right. Like, let's be honest. Are you storing it like, like sitting down? You're supposed to store it upright, you know. Oh, oh no! I I looked into it, and then they're like, "Yeah, you need to store it upright. You try to get a crate for it if you can." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "The way I'm storing it right now, it's okay. I need to find a better crate though, because they're upright, but it's not the best. And the, the thing I had to put them into is not the best either. So I'm like, I'm just I'm just gonna have to make have to make my own fucking crate." But I mean, I work at a place where there's tons of wood, so I can I can just make one. So I can I can do that. Mm-hmm. <sighs> but now I just can't wait for more video game soundtracks to come out on vinyl. Yeah, and and then other, it's like it's like Josh. The record player I would recommend is about two hundred dollars. The real big money sink it comes in the form of, I think amplifiers. No, yeah, speakers. Yeah, speakers. Yeah. But, Oh, the thing is, though, I would have been just be happy with uh, the what was it? The Walmart variety of record players like those ones were just 80 bucks. And it's like, I think I would probably be pretty happy with those. Mm-hmm. I see. Here's the thing. Like, this is the reason why, like, I ba- buy game soundtracks, you know, digitally. It's cool. Is that it's like to have like this really cool vinyl record and shit like that. I kind of like look at it and go, I really don't care. Because I don't yeah, have oh, a record player, so this does not affect me, and that's how I look at it. Yeah. I, I, that's the reason why, like, I'm like, Josh, the fuck are you doing? Like, I kind of actually, view, what I kind the of, fuck? I kind of view it as a Steam uh, cards at this point. Of like, you know, it's like I like the thing. I want to get more of the thing. I was like, oh, I could just get this dumb Steam badge. That'd be fine. And then <laughs> with the finals now, it's like, ah, oh, just get it for collector's sake really i'll probably put it throw it on my wall if i have space and yeah that's, 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 that's really that's my, my stupid logic with all the, the records i eventually i'll probably get a player but not, not right now soon enough not soon enough exactly because i'm i'm fucking weird yeah mm-hmm. yep Ooh. okay now we have one <laughs> last topic. Alex. This topic really isn't something that's like super worried about it. It's just mostly like surprise. Mortal Empires came out on fucking Thursday. I've played maybe two and a half hours of it. I like the reset up of the of the area. I like the reset up of the map. I like the new design for how they uh, start the starting areas for some of the uh, races. But this is a big but. <laughs> There is all the races vary from easy to hard except for one, and it's the one faction I really want to play, really badly. Like that, I want to be like damn good at. Like I'm like damn son, look how cool I am. And then I sit down and I look at the situation, and I'm like, this is the only, this is the only campaign, like starting faction I have ever seen in a war in a total war game that has had the starting the the initial initial challenge for start listed as very hard that is the only one i've ever seen and that's a, one of the scaven factions i'm like you motherfuckers and then i saw where it starts on the map and i was like oh god 
okay, I understand why, because it's the Skaven faction that starts immediately south of the Dwarf faction and right beside the Greenskin faction in Kalak Eight Peaks, which you can fucking defend for days. Yeah. But you're fighting orcs. You're fighting orcs. orcs and you're are, fighting orcs are good. dwarves. Orcs are stupid strong and have almost no armor except for black orcs. Or you're fighting dwarves who have stupid amount of armor but have no mobility. And you're like, oh god, what do I even do? It's actually like, ugh. I'm a little upset that I can't like play the faction that I really, 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 really want to. But that's what I get. Mm-hmm. So should I get a whole bunch of miniatures of Warhammer, or should I just if save you, my money you, and uh, just if, buy video games? Uh, oh, if and... you want. Josh. <laughs> yeah. It's it's fine. Get both. Get War Machine and Warhammer. I'd recommend Warhammer right now if you're not into War Machine is War Machine is very tournament oriented <sighs> right now. They recently changed, revamped everything and made it so that you have to play themes in order to be good at the game or probably more likely it has a very steep learning curve. That's probably my opinion on it. The Warhammer, it's all new. They've recently revamped everything and made everyone You mean 40K? Yeah, 40K. 40K 40k holy shit like I, I i will testify this because i played my first warhammer 40k game in five years and holy shit it's been streamlined guards guardsmen have a save against bolters and i'm like yes i approve this message <laughs> and anytime i got to make a save and enter the game i was like yes i approve of this new system because now i actually have a chance to make a, ro a saving throw <laughs> A yeah, saving throw is always a good thing. That's a good point. Well, or I could, or or I could just spend more money on magic cards. I mean, that's always a possibility. I, I mean, like the boxes and boxes of cards I have already. I, I, I can have more boxes yeah. and more records and more shit. Just, just pile the shit on me. Just pile, just keep piling it. I more, can't breathe. More games. All the games. <laughs> more more shit. Games. More games. Keep piling. I can't breathe. Keep piling. I, st oh, I can't. Uh, I want to find Josh's house. I, you, 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 you die like that character from the uh, from the Salem Witch Trials um, who literally – like when they're like – they're putting just giant stones on his chest to like crush him to death by just the, the amount of weight on him. And like they ask him, will you confess to this? Uh, will you confess to being a witch? And he just like looks at them straight in the face and goes, "More weight." <laughs> and I'm like, "Dude, you died like a badass." And he dies from like this, this like this punishment. Like, of course he dies. It's like there's you can't yeah. exactly like survive that. But I just fucking love the fact that it was just like mm -hmm. just in the most defiant tone that he could manage with no air left in his lungs or anything. He was just like, "Nope." More weight, you motherfuckers! I refuse to yield, and I just, and then he, and this is Josh currently just being like more weight. Yep, yep. cause cause uh, I'll uh, find a nice little cubby hole in the arcade cabinet that's uh, gonna try to smush me, and then uh, I'll uh, make a a, ca a cavern through the uh, uh, through the records. I like holding it up with the, like arches and stuff like that, and then I'll get the amiibos. Uh, the, the, my companions. <laughs> they, they will. They will be your guard. They will be your knights of the round exactly. table. And I'll be like, "Why is this a thing?" <laughs> I'll see a picture of it too, and I'll be like, J "Josh, why is this a thing?" Because reasons. What? Uh, and uh, the link, the all the link. Um, what was it? The Breath of the Wild uh, amiibos are gonna be like, <laughs> gonna be standing and watching the fort, and then uh, <laughs> uh, they're all gonna be a standing watch. And I'm gonna, you know, keep making this giant, um, pop, <laughs> not pop figure, but more of like just pop culture fig, like all these pop culture shit all over the place and be a giant castle and I won't die from the pressure. Then it falls on me, then I die. Mm -hmm. that's, exactly how, that's exactly how it's going to happen. 
Uh, I think that's a podcast, though. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a podcast. Man. Yeah. This is a very short one, actually, surprisingly enough. Like, we've only been going for... I mean... I have I been mean, recording for an hour and ten minutes, but I think it's... I think it's been... I think Jeff Jeff finally bounced on at about 7.20, so like minus 20 minutes off that, so we've been going for about 50 minutes. So I'm okay with that. Yeah, to be fair, it's probably yeah, really. because Alan's in a hurry and everyone else doesn't care. Yep. Yeah. But then again, I just forgot to do shit. Then again, everybody else is just a punk bitch, so nothing new there. I mean, Alan, yeah. how dare you say that? I'm so offended. I'm going I to mean, go play I'm, TF2 I'm, now <laughs> and cry. Yep. I'm a bitch. All right. I, I'm not a, I Actually, I'm no, a I'm not going to play probably. TF2. You're going to play Overwatch. Uh, I have a friend who's playing TF2 right now, and he's... I'm tempted to go into TF2 again, but I'm, I'm like, I, I don't like the way the game plays anymore. Mm. It, it fell like, I off prefer a over the top. Yeah, because like I prefer over the top superheroes compared to real like real ish cartoon people doing bullshitty things. I mean, the, there is an update to the pyro, which now makes it just an, a godlike killing machine. Which is I'm kind of questioning why in the fuck did they put that in there? Oh, uh, because uh, they uh, made everybody play a, uh, a game to see who got the next like big patch update, and it ended up going to the pyro. Surprise, surprise. So he's just going to be a killing machine until the next patch. Uh, they'll eventually put in the heavies update too, but like, ugh. I mean, heavy is it's freaking like, heavy is the best character I, by far. Uh, I debate that because engineer is still fucking pretty cool. I, I just remember me playing it way back in the day and just sucking with all classes except for heavy heavy. I seem to be OK with, but I mean, there's not much to do with heavy. It's just sit there, use tur use your um, just use your fucking minigun and just keep 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 at her. You you'll eventually win. I just never I never got very good with any other class. Fucking spy was impossible. Uh. <sighs> anyways, that's a podcast. Well, Everyone, stop recording. That's a podcast. Thank you for listening to the Black Mind Podcast. I'm sorry for Alan, Josh, um, for me being late. Um, also, uh, hope you guys enjoyed the show and hope you guys enjoyed Alan's rage. Um, as always, you can listen to the podcast every Thursday on blackmindgames.podbean.com. You can subscribe out to us on iTunes and other medium, including YouTube and other places. We're probably going to eventually start posting stuff on our YouTube channel that is very dumb and stupid, but that requires us in order to actually put in the effort. So, yeah. We'll eventually, eventually, maybe that will be the way that we fund our game. It's through YouTube, and then when YouTube demonetizes <laughs> us, we'll be fucked. Yeah, you, you know, like the ten cents we get from like our videos, I'd be like, yeah, that's enough to get like I don't <laughs> it's know, enough in order to grape, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we can get a, we can get a grape. Yeah, that's it's enough perfect. in order to pay Chris ten not... cents for a line of code, let alone Alan ten yep. cents for one second of modeling. <laughs> it just turns on the program. Yep, yep, totally. Just turns it on. Okay, good night. Good night.